Good morning. Good morning. I hope people back there in Savoy can see me too. So, <laughs> anyway, so um, thank you very much, Laura, uh, Laura Desidere, for inviting us here. This is super exciting for us. This is what we do, and you heard from the uh, chancellor and the lieutenant governor of a lot of the things that are happening. We do have our heart in in, in agriculture, and we spend. Uh, last week time with the Lieutenant Governor and we're working with her team uh, in trying to explain uh, that for us, uh, agriculture is food, agriculture and natural resources that expands a lot of great careers and, and, and future of our youth here in Illinois and uh, expands into the workforce that, that we want to, to develop for those, for those jobs. Uh, so, I think the partnership with the research park and the companies that are here are um, really helping us to, uh, to look at that future together. Um, and I think uh, what is important uh, for me is just to talk a little bit about uh, what we're doing from the college to generate uh, the workforce and some exciting things happening in the college in, in terms of research. I think like, uh, uh, the lieutenant governor brought something and, and, and the chancellor brought something that is, is dear to us, is to say, how do we talk about agriculture to audiences that are urban, uh, uh, and how do we recruit uh, students from areas that are urban? How do we bring them into exciting careers? How do we convince them that our, those careers exist within agriculture and that we can create a diverse, a diverse and educated diverse uh, workforce that will fulfill the jobs that we are developing in agriculture. So I need this. So, thank you. <laughs> so, <clears throat> again, uh, thank you very much for having us here. Uh, and what I'm going to focus is on that workforce. And this is something that hasn't started yesterday or the day before, has started uh, for a few years now. I want to thank uh, uh, Kim Kidwell for that too in terms of uh, how do we think about attracting students into the college that, in my mind, never thought of careers in agriculture. And of course, I have to show you some numbers, <clears throat> and I hope you can see them, but uh, these numbers are uh, a little bit of uh, the numbers that the current enrollment in the college, and you can see that we have increased the numbers in the college uh, in the past four or five years, there was a little of a dip in uh, during the years of um, the year of COVID, but we're back and we have a really, I'll talk about later about that, a very healthy class coming into next fall, which is get us all exciting. The, 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 again, I want to emphasize the fact that how, how do we recruit and how do we uh, attract students into uh, the jobs in agriculture that reflect uh, the, the makeup of the state and, and create a diverse workforce that you can hire from. So uh, this is a little bit just to give you an idea of what, where ACES stands with respect to the other colleges. There is a, there is a lot of, this is from uh, a freshman class from fall 2021, about 8,300 freshmen came to the University of Illinois and we have about 6% of them came to the College of ACES which is exciting for us. We have a, a large group of undeclared students that we like to convince them that are exciting careers into agriculture. They're already here at the University of Illinois, and we can present to them all the great, uh, great opportunities that exist in agriculture. Part of those opportunities, of course, is working with you in partnerships uh, uh, for, um, for workforce development. So, and sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm trained as statistician, so I need to, to show numbers, right? That's, uh, but, but the one thing is, it, it catches my eye here, and is what I did here is, in the college we have um, about 88 uh, different counties out of 102 counties represented uh, in, in Illinois. But what I did is I looked at the freshman class from last year, and I looked at where about 82% of our students come from six counties, Cook, DuPage, Lake, Will, Kane, and Champaign, right? 82% of our students come from uh, pretty much urban or suburban environments that probably never thought of a career in food, agriculture, and natural resources. So the, 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 the point is, 
Again, how do we talk to them? How do we present ideas of uh, exciting careers within agriculture? And then I looked at ACES. And I looked at ACES in terms of where those numbers come from. And this is side by side the same uh, fall uh, 2021 data. And what you see is that the numbers are very similar. We got uh, a, a very similar makeup of, of students coming to this university. This is a very impressive university. Is um, we need to we recruit the best in the in the state coming here. It's tough to compete for those. Uh, we're talking to diverse audiences. We want to bring them in, and there it is. That's a, a numbers game in many ways. How do we bring those students into 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 agriculture? Um, <clears throat> and then. You know, I, I, I did it, um, this is very quickly to show you where the, all the different departments in the college are, from ag and biological engineering to human development and family studies. You got all different careers within, um, within agriculture that are um, available for students to, to, to have. And within that, you also have an, an undeclared degree in ACES. And I met this morning Shannon. Uh, she's undeclared in ACES. I'm going to convince her to do something exciting in the active world so you can hire her. Shannon is right there, so you can talk to her <laughs> and, and get her to, to, to do that. But more importantly, uh, let me tell you a little bit about that transformation that happened in the past few years in terms of degrees and how do we prepare that, that force that you, can, that you can hire. And among those, we have now that is kind of an old degree, the computer science plus crop sciences degree that was established um, four or five years ago, and it was a pleasure for me to see the first graduate of that program um, walking through the stage in December. After three and a half years, this, this kid finished. We also uh, have a computer science plus animal sciences degree. These are standalone degrees. Um, and, and it's att attracting students technically that never really, they have an interest in computer science, never thought a career that, or, or or agriculture as a domain, and that's what we, we want to, to make the effort into making agriculture and our, our college the domain of a lot of, of, a lot of things that are exciting uh, for students. Uh, there's a transformation in what it used to be the old TSM degree. It's now engineering, technology, and management for agricultural systems that is attracting more students just because the combination of engineering and technology <coughs> Crop sciences have de developed a standalone plant biotechnology major that for us is really important that um, because um, as students apply to the University of Illinois, they see that as a standalone major that can apply to, and it has attracted a lot of students, again, that have, did, didn't think of ACES as a place that they wanted to come here in college. I also want to point out the standalone degree of agronomy. You know, agronomy was probably the oldest degree on this campus. And they got, uh, with, the, um, with the reorganization of the college in 95, um, that degree uh, became crop sciences. Now it stands alone in agronomy. I think, personally, I think agronomy you know, is that one of those old things that get new, right? Because we, we're going to need agronomists out there to work with all of this technology, to understand, to put it all together. And an agronomy of the future is someone probably that has a lot of tech behind it. So we're very excited about that. And you'll see in the college as well that a lot of our degrees are uh, turning into four plus ones. You know, four plus one meaning uh, four years plus one year it gets you a master's out of here and put in, you know, for people, uh, for, for students to be at a master level, a more manage, manager level uh, positions. And we're working in developing a series of certificates um, because we believe that um, in ag tech, as it is in, in, in many other disciplines, <coughs> and the reskilling of the workforce is very important. People will weave in and out of education from different jobs, and we need to be ready to offer the certificates that will bring them up today in certain areas that we'll, um, we'd like to uh, uh, grow or, or get additional education. So that is from, that is from how, how we think about recruiting, how, how we're going to attract those students. But then, then there is this excitement. What are the things that are um, 
what it makes it cool. What, it, what is it that is, is really exciting for, for those students uh, to come to the College of ACES? And Chancellor Jones mentioned the Wright Project, Steve Long, Don Ord. Uh, there's CABI projects there, you know, IBRL. There are all sorts of large awards and projects in, in, in the college. Um, we were able to uh, create the Center for Digital Agriculture that attracted AI Farms and other, and other projects. But I, I want to I wanna today emphasize one particular project that just came uh, to us just um, in the past uh, few months. And, oop, yeah, that's it. And this project is called Crops. Um, and the lead for this, uh, for this project is Steve Moose. And Steve will be around here today. I, I exchanged emails with him yesterday. So you can talk to him more about this. But this is, a, this is, a, uh, this is led by Steve Moose. Tony Studer, Vikram Matve from here, Cabral Gibman, um, and it's in partnership with um, a University of Cornell University, the Boyce Thompson Institute, and the University of Arizona. Uh, from Cornell, Susan McCooch, um, Abe Struck, and, the, and um, uh, uh, Becky Mosher from uh, University of Arizona. The CROPS, CROPS stands for, I love uh, acronyms, right? So I have to read it. It's Center for Research on Programmable Plant Systems. And what it is, is it, to summarize it is, can we talk to plants? Can we talk to plants? Can we, can we break the, um, the genotype to phenotype conversation? Um, can we uh, develop plants that are programmable and break the rules of life in between genotype and phenotype. What I like about this project is it was just not only um, a, a simple uh, technical uh, project, but what it is interesting about this is that it, from the beginning, it, it focuses on educating scientists, engineers, and the public on the transdiscipline of digital biology. So I think it's important that from the get-go, this project have focuses, has focused on um, developing an opportunity to educate uh, the next workforce of, of students that could get into this, educate the public into what digital biology is and the technologies that will be developed through this project, being able to be understood by the public and accepted by the public. This is, um, this is a, a project that is uh, funded through the uh, National Science Foundation and is one of those science technology centers. Uh, those science technology centers are funded for five years at the level of 25 million and they will be renewable uh, after, after five years. So we're very, very excited about that. And it really has created an ecosystem of a large group of uh, different disciplines from biologists, technologists, computer scientists. We have a, a large group of communication people working on this. I think communicating the, um, the developments of this project will be key. And also there is a lot of emphasis in best practices in science with this project. So with that, I'm gonna also tell you a little bit about how do we go in the future? I think this, this particular um, slide was formatted for wide screen and we're in a, a, a smaller screen here. I need to wrap up, they tell me. So I'm just gonna say something very quick here in terms of the, um, the number of applications. Again, we have uh, had a large number of applications this year. Uh, we're very excited about that. A lot of your uh, companies tell us that the students are uh, technically um, technically prepare when they're hired, but let me tell you a little bit about the core of the ACES academic experience and what we believe in uh, as students go through ACES. And very briefly, I'm gonna say that beyond the technical uh, part of, of, um, that they learn in our different majors, the ACES academic experience relies on experiential learning, global engagement, leadership enrichment, and inclusive intelligence. Those Four components are key 
for developing whole uh, students coming out of our programs, uh, developing an awareness of the global nature of agriculture, an awareness of um, diverse audiences and a diverse society and prepare for them, uh, and leadership and clearly an experiential learning which involves you know, internship in some of your companies to, to learn the real world. So and with that, I'm excited to talk more during the day with you and um, thank you very much and we'll have a great day. Thank you.